Welcome back. So in this installment, we'll take a look at a uh, special type of inverse Laplace transform and we'll solve a couple more equations with it. So in this particular example, uh, notice that our Laplace tran our function has produced a Laplace which consists of a product of terms in the denominator. And if there's one thing to be really cautious about when you do this stuff is to pay careful attention to the structure of what it is that you're trying to invert. Now I kind of see, if I stare carefully at this, I kind of see this s minus 2 down here, which makes me think that somehow this is going to be related to e to the 2t. And I kind of see that something over s minus 1, which makes me also think it's related to e to the 1t. However, uh, we have to be careful here because we can't, we cannot do what's very tempting, which is to write this as something like 2 times 1 over s minus 2 times the Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus 1. The reason we can't do this is because we're, we're working with integration and differentiation here. And we know that when we take uh, the Laplace transform, we're using integrals. When we take the inverse Laplace transform, we're using derivatives. And so when you take the derivative of a product of two things, you can't just differentiate each individually and then multiply them back together. So we have a different approach to this. Um, whenever you have a product of functions of s in the denominator, so you have a product and you want to split that product up, you use what's called partial fraction decomposition. We're not going to go through the algebra of it. If you're interested and you want to see how it works, I encourage you to look it up. But essentially what it does is if you have a product down here, which this is a multiplication sign between these two guys, when those two guys get multiplied together, I want to split them up into something over s minus 2 plus something else over s minus 1. And that's where we're going to get these two functions. We're going to see that those are going to come into play. Now what should be in this, these two numerators is unclear. This process takes care of it for us. We're just going to use Wolfram Alpha for it because it does take some time and energy and uh, it's easy to make mistakes. So the computer can do it really quickly. We just have to know what the method is used for and when to use it. So into Wolfram Alpha, what I would enter is partial fraction and then 2 divided by, notice that I have a pair of outer parentheses here and here so that that encloses everything inside those parentheses to be my denominator, which is s minus 2 times s minus 1. So just double check that your input corresponds to what you were trying to input. And then down here we see the result. So what that allows me to do is if I want to take the inverse Laplace of 2 over s minus 2 times s minus 1, what I can do is instead take the inverse Laplace of what it's equal to, and it is equal to 2 over s minus 2 minus 2 over s minus 1. Now you can't always just assume it's going to be a 2 in the numerators if it's a 2 in the numerator here. Um, it, it's, there is a way to do it more concretely, but let's, let's not bother with that. Now here, uh, because I have a difference of terms, I can indeed, because if you take the derivative of two terms, you can take the derivative of each one separately. So I have the inverse Laplace of 2 over s minus 2 minus 1 times the inverse Laplace of 2 over s minus 1. And uh, now I know that this is going to be 2. I can factor that numerator out. 1 over s minus 2. And hey, that looks a lot like an exponential function. Minus 2 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 1. The inverse of 1 over s minus 2 from our Laplace sheet is going to be 2e to the 2t. And I'll have minus 2e to the 1t. And that's my final answer. So that's how we would work through that. So if you have an, if you have a product in that denominator consisting of s terms or s factors, use partial fraction decomposition to attempt to split it up. So now most problems will require this. Uh, it's very unusual that you encounter a problem that doesn't. In our example from the last video, we we did. Uh, we did not have one, but that's because I chose this example to ensure that we didn't have to use that technique quite yet. All right, so here's another example. Solve dy dt equals 4y plus 2t with the initial condition 0, 10. Okay, so for our first step, step one is to take the Laplace of both sides. So I'm going to take the Laplace of the left equals the Laplace of the right. 
So from our uh, sheet number 35, I know that this is going to be s times the Laplace of y minus y of 0. And I know that here I have a sum, so I can apply the Laplace operator to each term separately, 4y plus the Laplace of 2t. And now I have some constants that I can factor out, and I also notice that my y of 0 is 10. So since y of 0 is 10, here I have y of 0, so I can write s Laplace of y minus 10 equals 4 times the Laplace of y plus 2 times the Laplace of t. Okay, so I can't do anything with Laplace of y. That has to stay. That's what we're going to isolate and then invert later to solve for y. The Laplace of t, however, that's one that we haven't seen yet. Laplace of a linear function. So if we come back up to our table, we want to look for the Laplace of t to a power. And so where do we have that? Well, this one will work for as long as t is to an integer power or a non-negative integer power, then I can actually represent it this way. So here's number three. We probably also want to highlight that one. The Laplace of t to the n is n factorial over s to the n plus 1. If you've never seen factorials before, factorial means, uh, so like 3 factorial would be 3 times 2 times 1. 10 factorial would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, dot dot dot, all the way times 1, over s to the n plus 1. So that means that if I do t to the first, t to the first is going to come out to come back down here real quick. This is going to be 4 times the Laplace of y plus 2 times, let's see, so this is n is 1 in this case. So this is going to be 1 factorial over s to the n plus 1. And so when I copy that all down, I get s Laplace of y minus 10 equals 4 Laplace of y plus 2. Now, 1 factorial, that's just 1 times 1, which is 1. So I'll have 2 times 1 is 2. s to the 1 plus 1 is s squared. So that's the end of step 1. The next thing that I want to do is I want to run step 2, which is to isolate the Laplace of y. Now that I have everything expanded as far as I can, I'm going to move 4 Laplace of y to the left. So I'll have s Laplace of y minus 4 Laplace of y. Now I'm going to move the negative 10 to the other side because I want to isolate uh, Laplace of y. So 2 over s squared plus 10. And now I'll factor out a Laplace of y. Remember Laplace of y is just a symbol. So it's just like solving for x. And that equals 2 over s squared plus 10. My last step in this portion is to divide by s minus 4. So I have Laplace of y equals 2 over s squared divided by s minus 4 plus 10 over s minus 4. And now uh, I, I'm going to, to handle this fraction over s minus 4, we can note that s minus 4 is s minus 4 over 1. And so now I can multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator so that the s minus 4 essentially will just uh, be, be in the denominator with the s squared. So here I will have, um, let me say 4 over, no sorry, 2 over, Let's go ahead and copy this real quick. And we'll copy that and paste it right back up here. I'm quite sure what's happening here, but uh, let's go ahead and write it. So the Laplace of y is equal to 2 over s squared times s minus 4 plus, and then we said that that's going to be 10 over s minus 4. 
And that concludes step two. We've isolated Laplace of y. Now in step three, we just want to prepare everything to, to uh, be able to invert. I could invert at this point, but I'm going to note that this contains a product of s's in the denominator, and so I'm going to use partial fraction decomposition on that guy. So if I come over to Wolfram Alpha, which I'll do on the next screen, I get that this uh, invert, or this first term becomes, if you do partial fraction decomposition on this, it becomes 1 over 2s squared minus 1 over 8s plus 1 over 8 times s minus 4. And so this whole thing right here is the partial fraction decomposition of just that. So now I've broken it up into more terms and you can see that these are a little bit more manageable, that this looks like a constant, this looks like an exponential, and this looks like it's going to be uh, uh, a t, a t function again. And then plus this is going to be 10 over s minus 4 that carries down. So now I invert both sides. So I'm going to apply the inverse to this side. And I'm going to apply the inverse to this side. And so remember again, the inverse of a Laplace is just the original function, just like a derivative of an integral or an integral of a derivative. And now because I have a series of four terms, I could take the inverse Laplace of each one separately. And you know what? While I'm at it, I'm going to factor out whatever I can. So I have a one half here that I could factor out and leave this as just one over s squared. So you can see that if you distribute that back in, you get one over two s squared minus one eighth Laplace inverse of one over s plus one eighth Laplace inverse of 1 over s minus 4, and then uh, plus 10 times the inverse Laplace of 1 over s minus 4. Now you might get some uh, like terms sometimes, like you can see that these are like terms. Yes, you can add their coefficients and make this 10 and 1 eighth, uh, or combine them later. So here actually we're starting step 4. Step 3 uh, kind of happened here, and now we're, we're working on step 4. So y is going to equal 1 half, so the inverse Laplace of 1 over s squared is just t to the first power. We did that back when we had to take the Laplace of t, we got 1 over s squared. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, it's not 1 over s, yeah, it is 1 over s squared, so it uh, becomes 1 over s squared. And then we have minus 1 eighth, the inverse Laplace of 1 over s is just 1, that's a constant, over s, plus 1 eighth, times e to the 4t plus 10 times e to the 4t. And we're pretty much done. We could uh, finalize this by just saying, okay, 10, uh, 1 8 is, I think, 0.125. So we get 10.125. Or we could write this as 81 eighths if we want. 10.125 e to the 4t plus one half t minus one eighth. Now I just wrote those in terms of uh, descending t uh, terms and in terms of the largeness of those terms, but you don't have to necessarily do that. But that is our final answer. And by the time we're done with this process, we don't have to substitute in any arbitrary constants, uh, any initial conditions to solve for those arbitrary constants because this process takes care of it for us. So that uh, leaves us with the final solution. And if we wanted to, we could check our work by substituting in this solution, y, in for y here, and substituting in the derivative of y here and showing that the two sides give me the same thing in the original differential equation. But that's our final answer. Um, and you can see that we didn't have to use any calculus. It was just a matter of using um, algebra, which, of course, sometimes, you know, can get a little cumbersome. But... So let me break this up. And so we'll go ahead and stop here. And in the final video, we will uh, just try to work one more example. So if you want to see one more example worked, go ahead and proceed to the next video.